Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with another ASUS ROG Ally video and today we're going to be testing out some ray tracing on this handheld gaming PC because we've got an RDNA 3 iGPU that actually supports ray tracing and since having the Ally in my possession, this is something I personally haven't tested. We did some 120 FPS uh, eSports gaming, eGPU, dock mode, emulation, Overall, just kind of look at the unit and see how it performs with Windows games, but I never enabled any kind of ray tracing with those games. But today, we're going to see what this thing does. Now, before we get started here, I do want to mention that I'm going to be plugged into power. We're going to be maxing this thing out because, you know, when it comes to ray tracing, we need as much as possible, so just keep that in mind. We're going to be running at 35 watts, and on battery, you're not going to get much runtime, but we don't have to worry about that because we're plugged into power. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. So first on the list, we've got Minecraft, and I do have the resolution of the unit itself set to 1080p. Personally, I'm not exactly sure how the resolution in Minecraft works, but I kind of wanted to throw that out there. And uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's working. I've got all of the information we need up in the top left-hand corner. Personally, I like using Afterburner, so I can kind of display exactly what I want to see here. But of course, we're not at 60 FPS, and I didn't expect it to run at full speed. It still looks absolutely amazing, but uh, right now we're getting an average of around 21, 22 FPS with uh, RTX on in Minecraft on the ROG Ally. Now there's a lot of different demos that we can actually take a look at, but my favorite is kind of this global illumination. And I mean, as you can see, ray tracing is working with this iGPU, but uh, we're just, you know, at a very low FPS, and I kind of expected this. But it's pretty cool to see this. I mean, running the game at 20 FPS isn't something that I want to do every day. But for these little demos here, just to kind of get those really nice visuals. And I'll tell you, it's actually working much better than I thought it would. We're going to go ahead and move over to a different section here. And, you know, it looks like we're getting about that same frame rate. I'm going to call it 20 FPS with RTX on in Minecraft. Next up, we've got Portal with RTX, and this is one that I've tested on my main PC. I'm not a huge fan of RTX, I mean, it's definitely really pretty, can make a huge difference in games, but it does take quite a bit of power to run at full speed. They did a really great job with this, but uh, again, take a look at that FPS in Afterburner. We're uh, around 20 FPS. Here's Doom Eternal, we're at medium settings, 1080p, no resolution scale, and of course we've got ray tracing enabled, it's set to quality, and there was no other setting that I could use with this AMD iGPU. Not sure if, uh, you know, if I was using an Nvidia card, if I could jack it up from there, I'm pretty sure I could, but it's kind of stuck at quality, but it's doing a lot better than I thought it would. And it really does look amazing. All of these uh, light reflections off the metal or shiny objects is pretty great on this little screen. But uh, of course, we're not going to run this at a constant 60 medium settings with ray tracing enabled. It's super close and I was really impressed by what we can do here. But I got an average of 56 FPS. And uh, we'll get out here, a little more action just to see what happens here. I'm not sure how well it's coming across, you know, filming this screen, but... Uh, that ray tracing is definitely working. I play this game quite a bit on handhelds, and this definitely changes the whole look and feel of the game. Here's Forza Horizon 5, and this is one of my favorite racing games. Uh, on these handhelds, it does perform really well, but again, just like most of the stuff in this video, I've never tested out ray tracing. So what I've done here is set it to 1080p. I've got a preset of high, but ray tracing is set to ultra. And, you know, I kind of was expecting it not to do as well as it did. Unfortunately, we're not at that constant 60, but I'd say ray tracing set to high would definitely enable us to do this because with it set up like this at 1080 with ray tracing set to ultra, we've got an average of 54. So I wanted to drop the resolution down to 720 and we got an average of 64. So if you don't mind playing this game at 720p, you can actually have a really good experience on the ROG Ally with Forza Horizon 5 and RT set to ultra. Here we have Quake RTX, and it was a bit too hard to see while I was filming the screen, so I just plugged into my game capture device. Uh, I got some bugs here. I mean, obviously, like when I'm trying to shoot at somebody, sometimes, you know, the bullet itself doesn't do any kind of illumination or anything like that. But when it's working, it does look pretty. 
Afterburner still running up in the top left hand corner, and I'm getting an average of around 27 to 28 FPS with this game. I thought we'd get a little more out of it, but there's a lot going on here with all of this global illumination and ray tracing in general. And of course, when it comes to ray tracing, we had to test out Cyberpunk 2077. I'm going to plug this into my game capture just so we can get a better look at everything. 1080p, low settings, with ray tracing enabled. Now there's a lot more ray tracing settings that uh, we can mess around with. And I'm going to go to a preset next, but I just wanted to show you this at those low settings with it enabled. Not too shabby. Getting an average of around 55 FPS. Definitely taking a lot out of this game because at 1080 low settings, I can get an average of around 72 FPS out of this game on the ROG Ally. We're going to enable a few more of these ray tracing settings here. So we're basically at ray tracing medium. and that just fell right on its face. From an average of around 55 FPS down to 21. So it's definitely taken a lot out of this little iGPU. I think uh, we've got one more thing we can do here. Remember, we're at 1080p, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down to 720, but we're gonna keep those ray tracing settings right there at medium. So now we're at 720p, ray tracing is at medium. I can get an average of 30 FPS now out of this game. I didn't think we'd go up that high, and I know it doesn't sound like much, but with everything we've got enabled here, it really does take a toll on this iGPU. Hey, now we're going to go up to Ultra. We're still at 720p. It just crashed on me. So taking it up to Ray Tracing Ultra on the Ally did crash Cyberpunk 2077. So yeah, overall, the ASUS ROG Ally can do ray tracing. Is it something you really want to do on battery? Personally, I don't think so. It doesn't do a lot of the stuff well, but you know, with this RDNA 3 iGPU, it supports it, so I figured I'd go ahead and test it. Most impressive one here was definitely Forza Horizon 5, but that game is really optimized and it works great on these iGPUs. If you're interested in checking out some more Ally videos, I've created a bunch. We've tested out emulation, more PC games, 120 FPS, eSports gaming, uh, eGPU, dock mode. I'll leave some links in the description, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you want to see anything else running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.